Welcome to The Heart of a Viking. These are art projects taught by the elementary art teachers from the Cape Henlopen School District in Delaware. We hope you have fun, create imaginative works of art, and make sure you share them with someone because after all, visual arts are meant to be seen. Good day, Cape Vikings, and welcome back to another episode of The Heart of a Viking. Baby Roo, Mama Roo, and I are back again to talk to you today about the emus of Australia. So the emus are a really large bird. Stay tuned. Let's listen for some really cool facts about the emus. Emus are unusual birds. They don't tweet. They grunt. They don't fly. They walk and they can run as fast as 30 miles per hour. They belong to a group of flightless birds called the ratties. Emus are the second largest bird in the world after ostriches. They stand up to six feet tall and can weigh up to 121 pounds. They have shaggy gray, brown to black plumage. Their bare skin around their face and neck is a striking blue black color. Emu chicks are gray with black or brown stripes. That helps them camouflage from their predators. Emus are featured predominantly in Aboriginal stories and culture. They're the inspiration behind dances and the subject of astrological mythology, including the Emu constellation and other stories. Emus are only found in Australia. They're highly nomadic, that means they move around a lot. They don't have one particular home that they stay in. An emu's preferred habitat includes open plains, but they can also be found in snow fields, forests, and the savanna woodlands. They seldom inhabit highly populated areas, rainforests, or the dry, arid regions. Emus are champions of paternal care. After helping to prepare the nest of trampled grass on the ground, the female will lay 5 to 15 large dark green eggs, then promptly wanders off. Daddy Emu then stays with the young for two years, defending them and teaching them how to find food. While they walk and forage, they softly whistle to each other. Emus can live 5 to 10 years in the wild. Bonus emu fun facts. Emus love to swim. Emus sleep at night. They're omnivores. They eat fruit, seed, flowers, shoots, insects, snails, small animals, and even animal droppings. They can go for weeks without eating. And they often walk 15 miles a day in search of food. Normally they're silent, but they do make deep booming noises during their breeding seasons. That boom can be heard up to a mile away. And emus have very keen eyesight. Although most emus do live on Australia, there are some emus that live right here in Milton. On my way home from HOB some days, I will drive down one road and see a farm that has some emus. I wonder if you've ever driven past that farm too. All right, it's time to gather your art supplies and head off to your art making space. Already Cape Artists, I'm super excited to get ready for today's emu project. And now we're gonna use all of those facts to help us create an amazing work of art that is a portrait of some emus. And I like to call this emu, I see you. All right, let's see what we need to begin. I'm going to be using some watercolor paints for my background. If you don't have watercolor paints, you can stick with crayons or markers or colored pencils, whatever you have. I'm also gonna be needing a, uh, a pencil for my drawing. I'm going to be needing some crayons or some oil pastels. So oil pastels are a type of coloring tool. They work a little bit differently than crayons and if you have them, I'd love for you to use them today. But if you don't, crayons will work just fine. I'm actually gonna do some of each and you'll get to see that they both look really good. And then you also need some circles from around your house. So these are some circles that I'm going to be using to trace to make my little emu's head. Different sizes, one's a little smaller, one's a little larger, so I have two here. This might be an emu that's closer to me and that's why it's larger, and this might be an emu that's further away. So two circle shapes to be your emu's head. 
All right, let me put all of this stuff away and we're gonna get started in just a moment. Let's begin. So I'm gonna use my smaller circle that I found and I'm going to use this kind of near the top of my paper. This time I'm gonna go a little closer to the bottom, kind of like right where my hand is. I wanna use the big side of my cup, so I'm gonna turn my cup upside down. All right, perfect. So now I'm going to add some of the details to my emu. So in addition to my two circles, which is my favorite shape, by the way, um, in addition to my circles, I'm going to be adding a shape in the center here that you might recognize. Let's see if you know this one. I wonder if you know that shape. Starts with an R. Yep, that's right, it's a rhombus. All right, so the rhombus is gonna be the beginning of the beak for my little emu, but I need to add a few extra details to make this look like a beak instead of a rhombus. So I'm going to draw a line that goes across from this corner to this corner, and it sort of looks like this dip in the bottom here. So it kind of dips down and comes back up, just like that. In the center right here, I'm going to add a little part of his beak and the little nostril spaces right here so my little emu can breathe. If you would like, in the emu's mouth, this is like his bottom of his beak and the top of his beak, I'm gonna show his little tongue just right there. That's gonna be little emu's tongue. Next, up here, I'm going to add two more circles. I'm just going to freehand these ones. That means I'm not using a circle tracer. And what happens a lot is they don't turn out perfectly even, and that's okay. My emu doesn't mind at all that this one has a little flat edge. Add two more circles, but this time I'm making the pupil of the eye. And I can do something really cool here. I can show you where my emu is looking with my pupil. So if I put my pupils here, it makes it look like he's looking down at this emu. I wonder where you'll put your pupils. Now I'm gonna repeat those same steps down here on the larger one. All right, excellent. Next, I'm gonna give each of them a neck. So I'm going to start right where the circle is here and draw one neck that sort of curves down and then heads off the edge of the page. And then I need a matching line for this side of his neck. There we go. All right, so now we get to use some of our colors. The first one that I'm going to do, I'm going to use my crayons. So when I use my crayons, I want to pick a color family to use. So in art, there are lots of different color families. These four colors, brown, gray, black, and white, are part of the neutral family. Then I also chose purple, blue, and this is kind of like a aqua uh, blue-green sort of color. These are part of the cool family. And what's interesting about these guys is they're right beside each other on a color wheel. So this is an example of a color wheel. Color wheels can look all different shapes and sizes. They can have different amounts of circles on them. My color wheel right here has six colors that go in a circle shape. That's how I know it's a color wheel. And I have some lines that are touching certain colors. So what I've done today is I've chosen colors that are right beside each other. Colors that are beside each other are called analogous colors. So I have my blue and my purple here. I chose blue because blue is pretty dominant in the emu's coloring naturally, so I knew I wanted blue. So that means I could have either chosen to add purple or I could have chosen to add some greens, but I went with purple this time. All right, so I have my neutrals and I have my blue with my purple here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color in his eyes. Next, I'm gonna take my gray and color in his beak. I'm 
gonna get my black back and color in the side of his mouth. and his nostrils. So I'm gonna break the rules real quick. I'm gonna get out of my color schemes. I'm gonna grab a pink because I want a little bit of pink just for his little tongue. Now I get to do the fun part, my favorite part, which is his feathers. So for his feathers, I'm going to start with my blues and my purple that I had chosen. And it really doesn't matter which one you start with. I'm gonna start with this one. color the entire emu, his head and his neck. So now I'm going to take this crayon and I'm going to use the same color and I'm going to make the first feathers. This time I'm pressing a little bit harder. I want all of the feathers that are coming from between his eyes to be shooting up straight up like this. I want them to be all feathery. I don't want them to be perfect. And then I'm going to have some feathers coming off to the side right past his eye just like that. Don't forget to keep pressing hard. Now I'm going to make some down underneath here. These ones are gonna be a little bit shorter. They're not going to extend out past his face too much. Maybe just a little bit. Oh, he's looking pretty cute already. Okay, I'm gonna continue that same thing down his neck. Okay, now I'm going to do some color blending using some of the other colors that I have, the analogous colors. So again, it doesn't matter which one you start with first. I'm gonna start with my other blue one. And this time I'm not coloring, I'm just adding the extra feathers. Okay, oh, he looks so cute. That's why I had a little giggle. Okay, so now I get to decide if I wanna use any of my neutral colors. Remember from the beginning, my neutrals were the brown, the white, the gray, and the black. I can add any of those that I want to my little emu. I like adding a little bit of black. Now I'm going to use my black in one extra place to do something that we haven't really done too much. I'm going to add a shadow. I want his head to look like it's out in front of his neck. So I'm going to add a shadow underneath of here. Using my black, I'm tracing that bottom curve of his face. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of a scribbly coloring underneath of here. It's amazing what a shadow can do. That really made the face pop up and that neck push back. I'm gonna do that same thing under the beak and under the eyes. Okay, fantastic. So I think that little emu is all done. I'm gonna start working on my next one. I'm going to follow the exact same steps, except this time I'm going to be using my oil pastels. Can't forget my pink one for his little tongue. There we go. So I'm gonna be using my oil pastels and I've chosen a different color family this time. I still have my neutrals, that's the same black, gray, white, and brown. I still have my pink, and this time I stuck with blue as my main color, so here's my blue, but I added green to it this time. I moved this way on my color wheel to get green and blue for my colors. 
really quickly, the reason I did not use a color on the other side of the color wheel from blue is because sometimes when those colors mix together, they don't make something that's quite as pretty. I wanted my emu to have nice bright colors, so by choosing colors that are beside each other, you're always gonna get something beautiful out of it. You can experiment using a color opposite and see what happens, maybe you like it. All right, here we go. Here are a couple of tips about oil pastels. Oil pastels are a mixture of a pigment and a type of oil, which is different from crayons. Crayons are wax and these ones are oil. So oil pastels act differently when you color with them. A lot of the times they, they act kind of similar, but there are a couple of things that make them a little bit different. The first is that they never truly dry. So later when I'm touching my oil pastel, I will be able to rub my finger across it and it will make my finger dirty. Almost like I'm finger painting. It'll pick up some color on my finger. In 20 years, you'll be able to run your finger over it and it will make your finger dirty. In 50 years, you'll be able to run your finger over it and it will make your finger dirty. That's just how oil pastels are. The second thing is they are um, great blenders. So already mine has, was blending a little bit on its own when I went around the black mouth, a little bit of the black already blended in with the blue. So sometimes that's okay because I don't mind that it did that on this guy because I'm going to make him all feathery anyways, but sometimes that can be a little bit of a bother and you have to be a little bit more careful if you don't want to see that blending. But most of the time it's a good thing that they are such great blenders. Both oil pastels and crayons resist paint, which means that whenever you're painting for the next step for the background, you won't have to worry about being so particular and not getting the paint on your emu because the paint will just bubble up and dry and you won't even be able to tell that the paint was ever there. All right, aren't they adorable? Um, so another thing you wanna be careful of with crayon and with oil pastel is you don't wanna rub your hand over it like that to get rid of some of these little flakes that came off. Crayon and oil pastel will both smudge and smear and make a mess. So instead, use your breath to blow off some of those pieces or pick it up and shake it over a trash can so that those little pieces don't end up on your paper and they also don't end up on the floor. Okay, so our little emu friends are done. I'm gonna take a moment and clean up my coloring supplies and switch over to paint. All right, so back to my color wheel. We've been working mostly with 
the colors on this side of the color wheel. This is the side that's called the cool family. You heard me mention that before. The cool family is all on this side. It's the green, the blue, and the purple. That's the cool family. The other side is called the warm family, and that's your reds, your oranges, and your yellows. So for the background, I'd like for you to use the opposite family. So instead of using purples and blues and greens, this time I'm going to be painting using red and orange and yellow, or a combination of all of them, whatever I decide. Now you have a million choices on how you want to paint your background. You can do whatever you'd like. You do not have to copy mine. I'm going to use kind of a striped blending technique, but you do not have to. You can have fun and make your little emus a happy little place to live. So I'm gonna be using my watercolor paints, which means I have a paintbrush and I have some water here. If you don't have watercolor paints at home, you're welcome to use crayons, color pencils, markers, whatever you have to give these guys a cute little happy place to live. So here we go. And as you remember from before, I'm using a type of paper that when it gets wet, it makes the colors look really gray and not so pretty. But again, I promise, give it a chance to dry and you will have beautiful watercolors. If you have watercolor paints, the colors will dry really, really nice. So as I paint with my watercolors, I'm going to begin by going right up against my little friends here. And as you might have heard me say before, when I'm painting, I do not have to be super careful about my emus because the wax from the crayons and the oil from the oil pastels, they both resist the watercolors. So the watercolor paint just sort of bubbles up and then dries and you can barely see it. So I go right around here. I don't worry about bumping into my little emu. Of course, I probably won't paint straight across him, but going around these little edge feathers, I think is gonna be just fine. Feel free to blend colors together. That means that you're putting one color on top of another one. I'm doing that. Some of my yellow is going on my orange. All right, so now I just have to give this guy a chance to dry and we'll check it out in just a moment. And we're back with our dry painting and the colors just look fantastic. I love how the colors in the background are very different from the colors that are on the emu. So let's have a little bit of a pop quiz. Let's get my color wheel back out here. And I wonder if anybody remembers the name for the colors that are on this side of the color wheel. Ding, ding, ding. Yep, it's the cool colors. All right, so if those are the cool colors, what are these colors? Ding, ding, ding. You're right, those are the warm colors. All right, so here's a tricky one. Way at the beginning of this lesson, I told you that I was picking colors that were next to each other, and I said a name that begins with the letter A that describes colors that are beside each other on the color wheel. Ding, ding, ding. I hope you got it. That was analogous. Analogous colors are neighbors. They kind of sound the same. Analogous neighbors sort of sound the same. Okay, so analogous colors there and also here for this project. All right, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I hope you love your emu work of art and I will see you back here next time at the heart of a Viking.